everyone. I hope you guys are doing well. We seldom say that technology is bad, uh, but we get to experience a little bit part of it in times like this by giving worship in a very unique setting. Um, I may visit here and there because it's my first time actually giving message uh, by using techno uh, technology. Uh, and I see myself on the computer screen, so I may get nervous here and there, and I visit here and there, but please bear with me. I will get better by next week. Today's uh, message title is, I am free at last. I am free at last. And the scripture comes from Romans chapter 8, 1 through 17. Romans chapter 8, 1 through 17. So please open up your Bible to Romans 8, and if you don't have... Bible, you can pause to go get your Bible. How convenient is that, right? But before we receive today's message, let's go ahead and pray first. Let's pray. Uh, Heavenly Father God, we ask you to please open up our hearts and mind and soul at this time. We ask you to um, please be with us and unite us in your spirit. Let us receive your words today. And obey to your words and apply this message to our life, in our life. We thank you for um, times like this, even in the times like this. Uh, we ask you to please continue to guide our life. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. We live uh, in the era of the Holy Spirit. Who is the Holy Spirit? Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God and Spirit of Jesus Christ uh, who guides our heart change our mind, and lead our life towards the kingdom of God. Having the Spirit of God means that we are no longer, uh, we're different from who we were before, and we are different from people who have not received the Holy Spirit yet. And the Bible has two big sections, uh, the Old Testament and the New Testament. The Old Testament has five genres, or five parts, the law historical books, poems, major prophet, and minor prophet. And the New Testament has three big genres, or three big parts. Uh, gospel, Act of Apostles, and the Epistle. In the last quarter, junior high, uh, we focused on the gospel, the first four books in the New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. And these are the books about the life of Jesus Christ by those uh, four writers named Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, who eyewitnessed his, Jesus' life. After the gospel, we have the book of Apostle, uh, book of Acts, the Acts of Apostles. And they're buildings of Christian churches through the Holy Spirit's guidance after Jesus' ascendance. Then there is Epistle. Epistle means letters to churches. There are a total of 21 epistles, uh, 21 letters to churches, and most of those letters were written by Apostle Paul. In this quarter, junior high will focus on this epistles, the letters to churches. And more importantly, we're going to focus on how the Holy Spirit is working in individuals' life as well as the life of church. Among the 12 epistles, Romans is the first letter in the Bible. And this book of Romans is, was written by the Apostle Paul and it is the longest letter uh, containing uh, the most fundamental, most basic doctrines about Christianity. Doctrine means sets of belief. The reason why... The Paul uh, wrote Romans was this. Romans, or Rome, was the central city in the Roman Empire. And the city had a lot of different ethnic people, uh, including Jews, uh, people of Israel, ever since the Roman Empire invaded the Israel. And through the disciples spreading the good news of Jesus Christ, Christian church was already built and op was operating in the city of uh, Rome in the first century. And since Rome was a mixture of very different uh, ethnic people and culture, the Christian believers in Rome had different belief about Christianity, which was very dangerous. Uh, 
people have different ideas, teachings, and interpretation about how one can be saved, who is God, who is Jesus Christ, who is the Holy Spirit, and what is what does Jesus uh, Christ's life, death, and resurrection means to believers, and why Jesus had to, had to go through all those things. They have different interpretation, different teachings, different ideas. First believers did not have set up foundation and boundaries about God, Christ, and the Holy Spirit. So Paul, in order to help them setting up the right belief and to let them understand the whole picture of God's um, work, God's salvation, uh, work through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, he wrote the letters to the Church of Rome. And that's what the book of Romans is all about. In the chapter 8 of Book of Romans, Paul tells how the Holy Spirit works in the individual's life. Paul says there are three main works that the Spirit does uh, in people. Number one, the Holy Spirit frees belief, believers from sin and death. Number two, Holy Spirit gives believers life and peace. Number three, Holy Spirit ensures uh, believers the adoption as God's children. Number one, the Holy Spirit frees believers from sin and death. Let's go ahead and read Romans chapter 8, 1 to 4 only. And we're going to read the rest of it as, as I go along with a, a message. So let's go ahead and read 1 to 4 only. First one. There is, therefore, now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the Spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do, by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin. He condemns sin in the flesh, in verse 4, in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Before we believe uh, in Christ, before we became uh, Christians, we were slaves to sin and death. We were not even aware of how sinful life we lived. When we became Christian, however, when we start reading the Bible, especially when we read the Law of Moses in the Old Testament, then we start to realize uh, the sins that we commit. At least that was for me. Before I became Christians, I did not realize how sinful I was. Disobeying my parents, hating people, using bad words, thinking bad thoughts, being careless, being lazy, not knowing God, persecuting Christian friends. All these things I did it without knowing that I was what I was doing. Some of you might uh, have experienced the same thing. If you were born to a Christian family, there must be time when you realize by yourself that I received Christ in my life as my Savior and God. Look back and remember how you live until that moment. After we become Christian, after hear, hearing God's word, after we have Christ in our life, then we realize how sinful life we lived. Because the word of God is holy words. And that holy words reveals how unholy us people are. But good news is this. The Romans 8, 1 through 4 says, Our Heavenly Father, by sending His own and one and only Son in flesh, He condemned, He judged, He punished sin in us. Through Jesus Christ on the cross. And the spirit of life, which is the Holy Spirit, apply that work of Jesus Christ, his death and resurrection, in us, the believers, and he sets us free together in Christ from the sin and death. Hallelujah. Some of you might think, well, we still sin, don't we? Yes, because we're not yet received our own physical resurrection, and we are not yet entered the kingdom of God. So we still sin. But there is difference. 
Now us believers who is being guided by the Spirit knows the power of sin is then diminishing as the power of the Spirit is expanding in areas of our life. And now we know that when we truly humble ourselves, when we truly repent our sin before God, then the sin cannot no sin can no longer jeopardize our child and father relationship to God, and it finally sets us free from recommitting sin over and over and again and again. Secondly, the Holy Spirit give us life and peace. Let's go back to our Bible and read Romans chapter five, a uh, uh, chapter eight, uh, five to eleven. Uh, Romans chapter eight, five to eleven. Verse five: For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the spirit set their minds on the things of the spirit. For to set minds on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, for it it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, indeed it cannot. Verse 8. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If, in fact, the spirit of God dwells in you, anyone, anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, Although the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. So now, since we are no longer slaves to sin and death, since our freedom came when the Holy Spirit uh, and entered in our life and apply uh, Jesus's G work of Jesus Christ to us. We now have new life and peace. So we do not live according to the sinful nature, but we live according to the simple spirit of life, the Holy Spirit. This means that our old self is gone. We shall no longer have mindset on what our uh, what our sinful nature desires, because. To set the mind on the flesh is death, verse 6 says. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile and em enemy, enemy to God. Therefore, those whose mind on the flesh, the worldly things cannot please God. Verse 7 through 8. Instead, we have mind set on the things that the Holy Spirit desires. Verse 5. We are guided and led by the Spirit towards and to uh, towards and to receive the eternal life and eternal peace. So Christians, when we live, we experience the fight between the flesh and the spirit within us. We feel bad when we make when we are about to make certain decisions. Uh, we we tend to go uh, and make decisions on our own, what we want, what we desire. We, and we feel bad because Holy Spirit within us continue to tell us that's not the right way. Well, guess what? That is a good sign that you feel the uncomfortableness. This shows that we are not we uh, we're not peaceful. We're not peacefully going along with the flesh, which leads to which leads to death. But that God and the Spirit is at work within us towards a life and peace. Lastly, number three, the Holy Spirit ensures us the adoption as God's children. Uh, let's go ahead and read Romans chapter 8, verse uh, 12 to 17. 12 to 17. Verse 12. So then, brothers, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of, spirit of adoption as sons and daughters, by whom we cry, Abba, Father. Verse 16, the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, 
and heirs, the heirs of God, and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him, in order that we may also be glorified with him. The Holy Spirit confirms and ensures us our adoption as children of God. He lets us the freedom and he led us to uh, call our father, uh, call our God as our Abba Father. Therefore, we as God's children, led by the Spirit, are able to obey God. We no longer have fear like those who are outside of God's family. We are able to um, testify in this world that we are children of God by our action, by our thoughts, and by our words. Yet, just as Son of God, Jesus Christ, was not welcomed by uh, this world of sin, we will experience some persecutions and some sufferings. But this is another confirmation that we are Christians and we still share in God's glory when we overcome those sufferings because we are heir, we are co-heir with Jesus Christ. Children of God, uh, we are living in the era of the Holy Spirit who frees us from sin and death, who give us life and peace, and who ensures, who confirms uh, us the adoption as God's children. Therefore, if you're in the Holy Spirit, if you seek the Holy Spirit and live and obey to the Spirit, you may experience some battle inside of you between your own flesh, which, is, which desires things of the world, and the Spirit, which desires the things of God. You also may experience some persecutions and also sufferings that Christ, the living Son of God, uh, experienced. However, in the end, after you live a life obedient to Holy Spirit, obedient, obedient to God, then you will live in the God's kingdom forever. Uh, you will be in forever peace in God's house. And you will inherit all that belongs to God. We are going through a very uh, interesting time. Um, I'm not sure we will ever experience time like this uh, ever again in our, in our life. We are put to distance ourselves uh, from from our uh, with other from other from others. We're shutting down ourselves from outside of the outside world for a short period of time. But instead of taking this time to fulfill your own desire with whatever you have at home, disconnecting from God, disconnecting from church, disconnecting from uh, people around you. Instead of doing that, let's take this time uh, as God's test. Whoever is seeking will be receiving. Whoever is knocking will be open. Whoever is searching will be found to the, to the Holy Spirit. And I pray that you spend your time with God and build that personal and that one-on-one -on -one relationship with God. And I pray that you get to worship God with your own family and sometimes by yourself, so you know, you experience, and you encounter the Holy Spirit, and you um, eyewitness the work of Spirit in your own life. Amen? Let's pray. God, you are almighty and all-knowing, and we know that the situation we're going through is, is all in your hand. There is no doubt. You are the creator of the universe, and you are the creator of us, too. Because we lack in our knowledge, we may not know why things are happening in certain ways. But regardless of our limited knowledge, we trust in your wisdom. We humble ourselves before you, and we want to ask you to keep governing our lives in the world. We trust in your perfect will and plan, and please help us to purify and strengthen our faith in the hard time like this. Guard our families, protect our friends and neighbors, and be with those families and individuals who are going through hard times due to virus. Please give the strength with those to those medical personals, volunteers, first responders, so that they can treat and heal without fear. We thank you for what you've done, what you are doing, and what you will do in our lives. 
please reveal your glory and you only be lifted in this time, now, and forever. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.